Dressed up, making his way to the cage, Mr. Carlos Valadez. And now, for our feature bout of the evening, it is going to be contested in the 135-pound elimination division. We have making his way to the blue corner by way of Aurora, Colorado, and Elevation Fight Team, Carlos Valadez. Carlos Valadez is as game as you can absolutely get. He's a kid who is a veteran of our Colorado Combat Club cage. He had a big finish back in December for us. Last fight, he doesn't believe that he lost. It was a closely contested split decision. He believes still that he has not taken that L, but he says that that's just all the more motivation and incentive to go out there and put on a show that puts a stamp on it this time. Yeah, he says here on his record, he's 3-2, and two, but really, he's 5-0. and oh, A little Sugar Sean O'Malley, if you will. But when you have a kid who is as into the game through and through as he is, I can understand that. Especially sometimes when uh, one of those was in enemy territory, if you will. And you drop one that's a split, you know, to a hometown guy. You know how that can go, Josh. Oh, yeah, for sure. But now he's making his way out here with the strong supporting cast in Justin Wetzel, who I believe just happens to be the best unsigned Bantamweight in the world right now, along Wait. with Rich Fletcher. So we're out here talking about Wetzel isn't signed yet? Still? Still not signed. Chrissy, hopefully what soon. is going on? I could not tell you, you know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he gets that call very soon because that kid is, he's one of the best out there. He's one of the best out there and completely deserves it. And this is a tough one that pulls on the heartstrings, Josh, just for me personally, because I love both of these kids. Both of these dudes are so great on the personal level and away from the cage, and I have a great relationship with each of them. And that's tough to see when the guys that you like so much end up having to go in there and trade the hostilities. It really is, Kersey. Like this, this game is a lot different than many other. It's in baseball and football and hockey. You have a certain level of worry for someone, but we're not normally talking about someone's health. When it comes to fighting and you have a connection to someone, or especially someone who's just a good person, you have a good interaction with them, you just want all the best and you don't, you want them to come out healthy. Certainly. And now making his way to the red corner, we have a former Colorado Combat Club title challenger in Felix Connell. He comes to us, by the way, of Aspen MMA out of Aspen, so naturally, he's another guy that trains at altitude. Conditioning is not going to be an issue for either one of these guys. Every single fight that we've seen of Felix's has had some sort of award attached to it. This kid comes out there and leaves everything in the cage. I'm going to look to see Felix Cano want to put the pressure and move forward, use that cardio to his advantage, but he's going to have someone in Carlos Valadez who will not back down an inch and is ready to put the hurt on him. Introductions for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is out of the bantamweight division. It is brought to us by Leafy Bells. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the Big Me Wagon Blue Corner. He ran in an already 136 pounds on the top. He comes to us with a record of three wins and only two defeats. He represents high altitude martial arts. Ladies and gentlemen, I get to you, Mr. Carlos. Thank 
clean five and catch yourself at all times, obey my commands. Questions out of the red car? Questions out of the blue car? Touch them up, let's go. And right away, do have to give a little bit of a nod of the old ball cap to Felix Cano. He did take this fight on short notice. Carlos Valdez was originally scheduled to fight another opponent based out of New Mexico. He did pull out just a couple of weeks ago, like we say. Last minute notice, they needed somebody who was going to be game to come in against such a tried and true veteran, albeit as an amateur as Carlos Valdez. Felix Cano answered the bell. That's a real one, Curtsy. And they meet in the middle. We have Carlos taking the center. And Carlos is going to look to strike heavy. Nice. Felix catches a kick. But great Carlos recovery and scramble leg. right away by Carlos Valadez. That's strong cage awareness and fight IQ to immediately know, hey, I got to get out of this bad position immediately. And then scramble to get himself into an advantage position. As he sits right now, he is in the guard of Felix Cano. Felix Cano's guard is open and he's looking to work. Now, Carlos Valdez is sitting in half guard. Strong cross face right in the middle of the cage right now. Just soften him up with some rabbit punches and on, right down to the body. Solid pressure by Carlos. One thing I will say here, Curtsy, is I do not like these uh, combat corner shorts. They ride very high. They ride very high. <laughs> but... That was a slick transition right there to be able to take the back. He had that underhook, sweeps right over, has that figure four on the near side leg, controlling that inside angle of Felix Cano. Carlos Valadez is working and just cooking Felix right now. He doesn't have it underneath the chin by any means, but this is certainly an uncomfortable position if you're Felix. 100%. If you're Felix, you want to take that. Ah, now he got the body lock, Carlos does. You're going to want to go to the side of the body lock to try and soften that pressure that's there. Certainly. And he's trying to get his shoulder blades to the mat, but he's doing so going deeper into that body triangle, turning in that direction. And Carlos is just gritty and mean once he starts to get to these positions. He's going to hit you like you fight your brother in the backyard. He's hitting you from every angle possible. With that body triangle now, he's starting to work underneath the chin a little bit, but not completely there, just kind of cooking him in the process. Looks like it's a little bit across the jaw, but we don't have the angle to see right where it was. They posture back up now to strike. And Felix has stood up with Carlos on the backpack. I wonder if we're going to see a front flip or a hula hoop. Tried to shake him off. Got drag, drug right back down to the mat. Certainly tried to shake him, but Carlos Valadez is just a strong kid. And a strong finish to the round with, with the short time placker hit. I think Carlos realized, hey, I'm probably not going to get this choke right here, but I'm going to come across the jaw and I'm going to throw a hard palm to palm crank just to let him feel it a little bit on the way out here. One thing part of why I really can get behind a kid like Carlos Valadez too is he's a student of the game as we mentioned earlier and he doesn't care who it is. If you have some information or some sort of technique or skill that you can offer as a martial artist and a fighter, he's all ears. He's willing to listen. I have to love someone who is that willing to be a student of the game and just learn to be able to grow. And on top of all of that, he says he does not mind being in a banger. Does not mind it at all. Coming out in the second round, Carlos again takes the center of the cage. He comes out with that high guard. 
It's interesting to see that uh, Felix is not using his wrestling pedigree. He is a three-time state qualifier in Colorado right wrestling, Colorado high school wrestling. But Carlos is a purple belt on the ground, so it's probably in Felix's mind to be careful and maybe try and test the striking. Certainly, and you know, I just think that we also have to give credit just to the overall body of work of someone like Carlos. Carlos is a strong kid. Those Very hips strong. are really strong, and so when he goes to down block or to sprawl, it's tough. You're gonna have, but there we see it right there. As soon as we mention it, a well-timed level change, nice and Felix Fano is able to get the takedown. You know, Jordan, I've learned throughout the night that when I say things, normally, immediately, the opposite happens right after. That just tends to be how it goes, <laughs> right, Josh? Makes you wonder if I know anything about this MMA thing at all. Well, you know what? You got three letters attached to your name, so that goes for something. And here we have Felix in side control. Stepping over with that neon belly, but he did give just enough space and opportunity for Carlos to be able to recollect the leg. Going Carlos the is deep using half. that to try to work himself back up to the feet. Try to go deep half, transitions over to the other hip. Felix doing a good job getting his legs back, turning the corner. Felix needs to score now here from these top positions. He needs to be able to make up some of that ground that he lost in that department in the first round. That was a headbutt. And no, sir, Jordan, that is not legal here in the state of Colorado in MMA and as an amateur nor as a pro. No, that is not legal under any rule set. And you guys didn't, might not have heard it or seen it, but I had to go to the almanac of combat sports, which is Jordan Curtsy off here in Lethway it's legal but not in MMA yes and I do believe we had a point taken away I wish we could see a replay was it incidental or was it intentional Yo, Josh, that happened right in front of us. I personally don't think I need to see a replay on it. His arms were trapped. Carlos yeah. had both of his arms trapped. And he is, I mean, if he would have disguised it maybe a little bit more for a strong head post for the position, I think that he might have been able to get away with it. However, it was the intent or the angle of that strike and with the velocity where his head went, it's hard to say that that wasn't at least with say. some intent. Was the intent there that he went to throw his head there? Certainly. Certainly, and good to see both guys are healthy. We have them back in the middle of the cage. Felix is moving forward now. Well now, especially, Josh, that round was potentially looking toward his favor up to that point with him having the takedown and having the advantage position for a while, but him losing a point. Now, at best, he's looking for a scratch round here. Looking for a scratch round. Definitely needs to take advantage and get on top and start scoring some points. And with just short time left in this second round, I think that we're gonna see, uh, see these guys come in potentially at a, uh, let's see here. I do believe we're gonna have a one point advantage going into this third round by Carlos Valadez. For sure. Just wanted to see if there was any thunderous flurries that ended off that round right there. But like I say, I believe that with that point deduction, we're looking at uh, we're looking at one point for the advantage to uh, to Carlos Valdez. Or actually, I should say that would be it's, it's tied right now. Right? It is tied, yeah. Because uh, Carlos won the first round. Yeah, yeah. Lost the second round. Math so that's is hard, nice folks. Season. Numbers are hard, people. It's a 19-18. I won't throw Curtsy under the bus. He's not doing math on a piece of paper in front of us at all. Those are just stick figures. Happy mistakes. Not at all. <laughs> you know what? 
We're great at talking. That's why we don't have to do that. Guys, I fight for a living. Don't, don't take anything I say serious. And here we go, going into the third round. We want to see some definite urgency from Felix. I think he needs to go out and definitely put on a real strong performance in this last round. Agreed. I think that he needs to look to find a finish in this round if he wants to get his hand raised. Now, if you were in the corner of Carlos Valadez, if you are Rich McQuesho or Justin Wetzel, what did you offer your fighter in between rounds? I, I would definitely tell him to not take his foot off the gas. Go back to what was working in the first round. Try and establish your game. Because if you tell him that he's ahead, even at the point he's going to need a finish, you don't want him going out there playing it safe because that's where he's going to get himself in trouble. Certainly. Now we have a uh, top triangle right now set up by Felix Connell. I would like to see... Felix attack that right arm. But we do see, now that, that, that's a blatant glove grab right there. His fingers were all the way in Carlos Valadez's glove and Tim Mills missed it. But Carlos was able to at least use the momentum from that drag of the arm to get himself back up to his feet. A nice hip toss by Felix going back to the ground. Carlos needs to use the fence right here to be able to spring himself off and get himself back to the feet. Connell works over to Neon Belly, but again, as soon as he moved to that position, Carlos circled right in and is looking to try to get up on a single leg himself. But with just nine, under 90 seconds left, Carlos needs to start getting busy to try to get himself out from this bottom position. There's not a lot of scoring going on right now from the top by Felix, but positionally, it looks a little bit better in the judge's eyes when you're the guy that's sitting on top. That it does, that it does. Especially if the guy from bottom is just holding on, trying to pull him into him, and not really attacking any submissions. Felix has the hand over the mouth of Carlos Valadez, disrupting the breathing a little bit there. With that half guard open, Felix does all, did also have the opportunity to uh, to step over in the mount, but this is we and mentioned not a lot of activity. Up. With 30 seconds to go, they Tim stood him up. Him back up. This could be 30 seconds for the whole fight, folks. Oh, these boys are getting after it. Shot in by Carlos. Felix handling it pretty well. Looking to land some ground and pound as the bell rings. Such a gritty display by both fighters right there. You know, that was uh, that was action packed through nine minutes. Especially on short notice. Hey, Will Shano comes out and puts on a fight. On a short notice call, definitely a great performance to just come in here and scrap. And then at the same time, Carlos Valadez, I told you folks, he's a dog. He's a dog. Do you think, Kersey, that that was enough? 10-9, 10-9, round. We might be looking at a draw. We might be looking at a draw. That's what I was trying to get at, yeah. yeah. Could very well be. It all depends on how that third round gets scored. Correct, yeah. You know, if, if they decide to score that early onslaught in the favor of, uh, of Carlos, especially the, the reversal and the change, but at the same time, the way that the round finished with Felix on top. This is one that could go either way. the official decision. For everybody watching at home, 
how do you guys have this scored? Hit us up on Twitter. You can hit me up at Peanut Podcast. Hit Josh Frem up at Josh Frem MMA. The judges are having a little bit of a difficult time here. You know, and Josh, I feel like I would rather them take their time, especially when take we had a, a foul into the equation. Make sure that those scores are tallied right. We don't want any situation where someone inadvertently gets their hand raised. We want it to be fair. We're a fighter yes. first organization owned and started by fighters. We want this to be the best experience for those gladiators going in there searching for glory in the cage. And here we have the official decision from Aaron. Ladies and gentlemen, back to back, back to white banging fights, man. Put your hands together for these two right here. My God. You judges have reached a unanimous decision. All three judges scored about 28-27 for your winner. And fighting out of the blue corner. That point is crucial. Certainly a crucial situation right there, and that's a mistake that Felix Connell will grow from. You know, he, he's a kid who has a bright future. Both of these guys have such a bright future. And I can't wait to see when they both make their way back in there. Like I say, that's uh, that's nothing to hang your hat on if you're Felix Connell. You came in, you took this fight on very short notice, and uh, you left it all hang out. So I gotta say, man, if you notice this card, we had the like the baddest fans and weights all got stacked and stacked. Hey, we lost again. we lost it's one bad to man, unfortunately. But this is pretty much like a tournament of bad weights this evening. You really showcase your skill with tenacity. Man, I gotta say, what are we looking for next? I was looking to go pro next. It wasn't the fight I wanted, you guys you know, it was tough. I had a tough break there yesterday, no excuses. We'll see. We'll see. Is there anybody you want to call out before you go, bro? Is there some people you'd like to thank in the house? Yes, everybody from my job, they came. All my buddies. I hope you guys like everybody from Hamlet. Los Angeles, Ladies and gentlemen, you're with